J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program coming to you from Hollywood, California, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with Good Night, Moonlight. The sweetest words of tongue or pen are, let's have that same dessert again. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, those are the happy words that every housewife loves to hear. And believe me, those are the words you do hear whenever there's jello for dessert. Because jello is a dessert that folks like to see on the table just as often as possible. And no matter how often you serve jello, it never wears out its welcome. One reason is jello always looks so wonderfully good, with its bright colors reflecting all the rich beauty of fresh sun ripened fruit. And Jell-O always tastes so good, too, no matter which one of Jell-O's six delicious flavors you choose. There are the rich, tempting flavors that recall the season's first strawberries, raspberries, and cherries. Also, Jell-O's grand citrus flavors, orange, lemon, and lime, all of them just as gloriously refreshing as the dewy, fresh fruit itself. So, friends, order some Jell-O from your grocer tomorrow, and while you're about it, ask for several packages of those popular new Jell-O puddings, Jell-O chocolate pudding, Jell-O vanilla pudding, and Jell-O butterscotch pudding. They're really swell. Moonlight played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce that uh, next week marks our final appearance on the air for this season. So tonight, we bring you our master of ceremonies who has one more Sunday to greet you. That's right, Don. One more broadcast. Yes, sir. And one more paycheck. Yike! <laughs> Jack Benny. Uh, Jello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, here we are coming to the close of another season. Gosh, the months sure fly by, don't they? Yes, they do, Jack. They certainly do. You know, it doesn't seem possible that vacation time is so near. Just think, a couple of more weeks and I'll be on a boat bound for good old Honolulu. Honolulu, eh? Ah, that ought to be a grand trip. Have you ever been there before, Jack? Uh, yes, Don, about ten years ago. But the grass skirts were much longer then. <laughs> I'll probably never recognize the old place. <laughs> Gee, I can hardly wait to get on that beach at Waikiki. Oh, uh, it must be gorgeous with that tropical scenery and everything. And I understand they have a couple of very lovely hotels right there on the ocean. That's right, the Royal Hawaiian and the Moana. And let me tell you something, Don. Those two hotels are tops. They're the last word in luxury. So I hear. Which one are you stopping at, Jack? Uh, neither. <laughs> you see, uh, I've already made reservations at the Sweet Leilani Auto Court. <laughs> <laughs> it's a brand new, and it's just a short walk to the bus that takes you to the beach. It... <laughs> oh, it should be swell there. Huh? The Sweet Leilani Auto Court... Jack, now, you only take a vacation once a year. Why don't you live at the Royal Hawaiian? Well, I want to relax, Don. I want a place where I don't have to dress for dinner every night. But, Jack, the Royal Hawaiian is a perfect place for relaxation. You don't have to dress for dinner unless you want to. Oh. Well, Don, you see, the sweet Leilani is American plan. That's the way I like to live when I travel. No fuss or inconvenience. But, Jack, the Royal Hawaiian is American plan, too. Oh. <laughs> Well, Don, as long as I'm going for a rest, I want a place that's small and intimate. But, Jack... Oh. <laughs> now, forget it, Don. My mind's made up. Well, it's your vacation, so I guess you can live where you want to. By the way, uh, what are the rates at the Sweet Lilani? It's $8 a day for the regular tourists and 5 for us beach boys. <laughs> Oh, you can't beat it, huh? Say, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello. Say, Jack, if you're going to Honolulu, you ought to buy a new bathing suit. Why? What's wrong with the bathing suit I have now? Well, for one thing, it's got long pants. <laughs> Mary, my trunks only go to the knees. Not when they're wet. Never mind. <laughs> Go 
Don't make things up. Well, Jack, if Mary's talking about that suit you wear around your swimming pool, it is a little old-fashioned. Old-fashioned? Yeah, you ought to rip that Coney Island off the back. <laughs> You're in the West now. Mary, I like that suit, and it's not old-fashioned. I got it only a year ago in my father's store in Waukegan. Well, it must have been under something that wasn't selling. <laughs> I'd like to see something in that store that Dad couldn't get rid of. You know, my father has a slogan. If it don't sell in a year, I'll wrap it up and we'll dick her later. <laughs> He's some salesman. I know. When we were in Waukegan last June, he told me I had a figure like Dorothy L'Amour. Oh, he was kidding, Don. He was not. He sold me a sarong. <laughs> There you are. That's Dad for you. You think that's something? He sold me a sailor suit. A sailor suit? If I don't find a sailor, it's a total loss. <laughs> well, that's rich. So Dad finally got rid of it, eh? Say, Mary, come to think of it, I'd like to borrow that outfit. I can wear it on the boat to Honolulu. Are you going by boat? I thought you were going to swim. <laughs> now cut that out. <laughs> I'm going on the Luraline, and it's a great big ocean liner. Oh, uh, you know, Jack, I envy you that trip to Honolulu. Are you going to stay there all summer? I'd like to, Don, but I have to be back by the end of July to start my new picture. Oh, that's right. That's the one you're going to make with Fred Allen, isn't it? That's what Paramount thought, but I straightened that out. I spoke to Mark Sandwich, the director, and Mr. Allen has been eliminated from the cast. In the first place, how would they ever photograph that face of his? What's the matter with his face? I could talk for an hour on that. <laughs> Why, do you know, Don, when we were in New York last month, the bags under Alan's eyes looked at Phil Harris's and said, My son, my son. <laughs> anyway, I put my foot down and Mr. Allen will not appear in my vehicle. Well, that's news to me. Say, Jack, who's going to be your leading lady? Only lovely, beautiful Mary Martin. That's all. Mary Martin? Well, isn't that the girl that used to sing My Heart Belongs to Daddy? Yep, that's her. Is she going to sing it in your picture? I don't know. It's a kind of an old song. Well, you're an old daddy. Revive it. <laughs> Mary, just let me worry about my picture and everything will be all right. Oh, hello, Philzy. Hiya, Jackson. I hear you're getting ready for that big vacation in a couple of weeks. Yes, sir. Where are you going this summer, Phil? Oh, I don't know. I haven't made up my mind yet. Why don't you go to Honolulu and see Jack's bathing suit? Oh, quiet. <laughs> have, uh, have you ever been to Honolulu, Phil? No, but I sure wish I could go. Oh, boy, how I'd like to sit on the beach in the moonlight with a couple of those cute little papayas in my arms. <laughs> cute little what? Papayas, you know, girls, dames. Papayas? Sure. Don't you speak Honolulian? <laughs> Honolulian? Phil, in the Hawaiian language, a papaya is a melon. A girl is called Awani. Oh, Jack, you're wrong about that. Awani is the name of the hotel we stopped at in Yosemite. Oh, oh, yes, yes. A Hawaiian girl is a Wahini. Oh, that's right. That's the word. So you see, Phil, what you really mean is you'd like to be on the beach in the moonlight with a couple of wahini. Let it go. I'll get some local stuff. <laughs> That's the idea, Phil, and I know your technique. You drive down the boulevard in that flashy car of yours and da, 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 da. Can I give you a lift, honey? <laughs> That's you. By the way, does your guitar player still sit in the rumble seat with a lasso? <laughs> does he? Now, wait a minute. Don't mention that dumb bell. He roped a cop yesterday. <laughs> roped a cop? Yeah, what a nitwit. I told him a million times. Anything in blue, lay off of. <laughs> Oh, he's nearsighted, eh? Yeah. I should have known that. He hasn't hit the strings on his guitar in eight weeks. <laughs> well, Phil, so much for your private life. And now, inasmuch as there are millions of people listening in that are just dying to hear one of your numbers, how about playing something? I'll be only too happy to acquiesce. <laughs> oh, my goodness, he got it right. Play, Junior, and go to the head of the class. Ought to get more dope with them big words. Hit it, boys. <laughs>
that was uh, Your Guess is As Good as Mine, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. Yeah. Oh, say, Phil, before I forget it, uh, when I leave for Honolulu the week after next, I wish you'd bring your entire band down to the boat and play a loa for me. You know, give me a real send-off. Well, that a loa is a pretty tricky number. I don't know if we'll have time to learn it. <laughs> All right, play Tiger Rag, but be at the boat. <laughs> Now, let's see. Uh, oh, yes, Don. Yes, Jack. I want you down there to cheer and wave and holler Bon Voyage to me. And Mary, Mary, you bring a lot of confetti and throw it at me. You understand? Yeah. What about Dennis A.? What's he going to do? I got him down for a basket of fruit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, an apple and a banana and three or four bottles of champagne. And this is very important. I want all of you to be there early. Well, come to think about it, Jack, I may not be able to make it. You be there, Don. I want everybody on that boat to know how much my gang thinks of me. I'll bring an onion so I can cry. <laughs> it won't be necessary. Now, look, fellas, I want you to remember one thing. On the dock before I leave, I want you all to cheer and be happy. But as the boat is pulling out, I want those cheers to gradually taper off as you realize that you won't see me again for four weeks. So your mood suddenly changes from gaiety to sadness. Do you get it? Yeah, what time is rehearsal? <laughs> <laughs> There'll be no rehearsal. I want it to be sincere. And uh, by the way, Don, do you think I ought to take along some Jell-O with me? You know, I'll be gone for quite a while. Oh, uh, no, Jack. Jell-O's an established dessert in the Hawaiian Islands. It is? Why, certainly. And that reminds me. Connie's and Wahinis. The next time you're in the mood for attempting an appetizing Nakawakia... Hmm... Why not run down to your neighborhood Halakui and ask him for a package of Jaloa? That must be Jello. You will find that it's not only economical and easy to whom a cow cow. Easy to whom a cow cow? <laughs> That's a pit. But it comes in six delicious flavors, so insist on genuine Jaloa and always look for the big red letters on the Huma Huma Nuka Nuka Kuma Mawa Pow. <laughs> Why, Don, does that long word mean box? Kakua. Well, that's the best plagola we've had this year. <laughs> and so, ladies and gentlemen, we leave the beautiful Hawaiian Islands and wend our way back across the broad Pacific to Sunset and Vine. Ah, what a trip. Say, Jackson, I just have to think of something. Oh, fine. What is it? If you're going to take a vacation this summer, how are you going to make that picture with Fred Allen? Phil, I explained that before you came in. I'm not starting that picture before the end of July, and Mr. Allen is not going to be in it. I had him scuttled. <laughs> well, I heard his program Wednesday night, and he said I don't care right... what he said. And incidentally, Phil, you know my rule. That'll cost you $5 for listening to Alan's broadcast. <laughs> you want to pay me now, or shall I deduct it? You wouldn't dare dock me, brother. I wouldn't, eh? Well, if your paycheck isn't $5 light this week, may I be under the shower when the pot of gold calls. <laughs> Take your fine like a man. Fine, fines, rules, rules. I never saw a guy like you. Well, what's your complaint? Five dollars fine if you listen to Alan's program. Two dollars fine if we're late for our show. Well? I got one more laugh than you did last Sunday, and you docked me seven fifty. Well, you got that big laugh at my expense. When I happened to mention that my fortune teller, Madame Zuzu, predicted that I'd win the Academy Award next year, you said she ought to be raided. Nice talk. Well, they closed her up, didn't they? <laughs> That's just a coincidence. Madam Zuzu is no phony. Well, if she's so good, why didn't she look in her crystal ball and see the police coming? Phil, go down to the clink and ask her. <laughs> Don't bother me. And another thing, Harris, for trying to corner me, it's going to cost you another $5. So hand it over. I think that's awful. Don't you, Phil? Well, I don't mind paying the fine so much, but I hate to see all that dough go out of circulation. <laughs> oh. So now you're getting wise, eh? Trying to be comical, eh? Well, listen, stupid. Yes, please? <laughs> oh, hello, Dennis. Well, you're, uh... You're a little late tonight, aren't you? I'll have to owe it to you. I'm broke. <laughs> That's all right, Dennis. Forget it. You're a nice kid, and I won't take advantage of you. I'll tell you what you can do, though. When I sail for Honolulu, you can bring me a big basket of fruit. A basket of fruit? Yes. After all, you can't come down to the boat empty-handed. Why not? Read your contract. 
Now, wait a minute, Mary. If Dennis thinks the world of me and wants to bring me a big basket of fruit with a couple of bottles of champagne in it, that's his business. Champagne? What's going on here? <laughs> All right, Dennis, settle down. And now that you're here, may we have our usual delightful tenor solo? Sure, but isn't Mr. Harris going to play a band number first? Dennis, if you'd have been here on time, you'd realize that Mr. Harris and his boys have already barbecued a selection. <laughs> so now it's your turn. Okay. Sing, Dennis. Gee, champagne. Dennis. I was better off when I was jerking sodas. <laughs> Dennis, sing. For all I've done for that kid, he begrudges me a bottle of champagne. <laughs> Sung by Dennis Day. And Dennis, that's a beautiful number. Really lovely. By the way, that's from some picture, isn't it? Yeah, that's from Buck Benny Rides Again. Oh, oh, it is. Oh. Well, well, it's a grand song. I was going to sing Playmate, but you made me change it. <laughs> and now, um... And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight... Remember, we were out in the lobby and you told me... Dennis. Dennis. <laughs> Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction... Scram, kid. Uh, for our feature attraction... The uh, Benny Jokes Like Mother Used to Make Players will present their version of the Los Angeles Telephone Directory. A murder mystery entitled Number, Please, or It Wasn't the Switchboard That Was Plugged. <laughs> now, in this, uh, in this thrilling drama... I will play the part of Oxford 7071, 
who is madly in love with Hollywood, 2734. <laughs> so she leaves her husband, West Los Angeles, 33022, Jr. <laughs> but, but her husband doesn't mind because he's secretly in love with a blonde Burbank unlisted number. <laughs> Catch on? Now, in this drama... Oh, who can that be? Van Nuys, 3500, open up! Well, it's Andy Devine. Come on in, Andy. <laughs> well, hello, Andy. Hi, you Bob. Well, hello, Mary. Good to see you again, Andy. Well, 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 it's nice to see you again, Andy. Hey, you don't get into Hollywood as often as you used to. Oh, it's getting too city-fied, Buck. When I drive down Vine Street in my horse and buggy, everybody stares at me. Oh, still driving the old nag, eh? <laughs> Can you imagine that, Mary? Andy drives into town in a horse and buggy. He ought to be up to date and get a Maxwell, eh, Sporty? Eh, Sporty, eh, Sporty? Gee, you're cute tonight. And uh, another uh, thing. Uh, <laughs> always goes... <laughs> And what? another thing, Buck, what? when they built this NBC studio, they forgot to put a hitching post out in front. There ain't no place to time a horse. Well, just hitch it to a song plugger. There are plenty of them standing around. <laughs> Say, Andy, Andy, how did you happen to drop in today, anyway? Well, Buck, you only got one more broadcast to do, so I come over to see if I could handle the summer show. The summer show? Well, Andy, what could you do with this program? Well, I could take your place as MC. Uh huh. My hired man could be Don Wilson, and Ma could be Mary. Well, who could you get to be Phil Harris? Pa, he'll drink anything. <laughs> oh, well, that'll help. Of course, your paw don't look like Phil. Well, we could curl his hair if we can get the burrs out of it. I know, Andy, but can he handle the job? I mean, does he know anything about music? Uh, not a thing, Buck. That cinches it. <laughs> yep, he's your man. Why do I do it? Why do I stand for all these insults? Because you can't get a job anywhere else. Now go sit down. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, Andy, I'd love to give you and your folks a chance at this program, but everything is pretty well set. You see, the Aldridge family has taken over the show for the summer. Uh, they are? Yep. Uh, no chance for the Divine family, huh? No, I'm sorry, Andy. Well, I better run home and tell Paul before he takes that bath. <laughs> yes, I would. Well, so long, Andy. Uh, so long, Buck. Oh, by the way, there's an old friend of yours in town. Did you see him? An old friend? Who? Fred Allen. Fred Allen? Fred Allen's in town? Uh, sure, I just saw him go into the Brown Derby. Oh, it must have been Bull Montana. <laughs> it couldn't have been Allen. Well, Jack, that's what we've been trying to tell you. It's been in all the papers. Do you mean that... Certainly, Allen's out here to make that picture with you, and he's going to be in it whether you like it or not. Oh, he is, eh? Mary, get me Mark Sandrich on the phone. It's Hollywood 2411. Okay. I'll straighten this thing out in a hurry. Well, so long, Buck. Uh, I hope I didn't start any trouble. Don't worry, Andy. I'll handle it. So long. Ellen, I'm going to have that guy kicked right out of California. Oh, Jack, stop acting like a kid. Is it going to kill you to make a picture with Alan? Don, that's a fate worse than death. <laughs> Believe me. Be reasonable, Jackson. The guy came all the way out here. What's he going to do all summer? Let him get a tan over that jaundice of his. What do I care? <laughs> In the first place, he has Hello? no... Hello? <laughs> Mr. Mark Sandridge, please. I'd like to make a picture just once where I don't have to go through a lot of aggravation. Hello, Mr. Sandridge. Jack Benny is calling. No, Jack Benny. Benny. Spell it for him! <laughs> it begins with a B. B-E-N... Give me that phone. Hello? Hello, Mr. Sandridge. This is Jack Benny, the star of Man About Town, and Buck Benny rides again. Why don't you mention some of those stinkers you made? <laughs> Never mind. Now, look, Mr. Sandridge, I thought I made it clear that I will not make a picture with Fred Allen. I don't care if he has got a contract, tear it up. No, his. <laughs> 
But look, Mr. Sanders, the guy has no class. He's a low comedian. I can't afford to be in a picture with him. Tell him you'll quit. I quit. Mary. <laughs> now, look, Mr. Sandridge, if you think I'm going to... St- but... I know, but... I know, but... I know, but... Say, Don, are you going home right after the broadcast? Yes, I was planning to. Why? I know, but... Well, I was wondering if you'd give me a lift. you go right by my house. I'd be glad to, Mary. I know, but... <laughs> But, say, Dennis, are you coming over to the Wiltshire Bowl tonight? Well, I was going to, Mr. Harris, but I haven't got a date. Come over anyway, kid. I'll get a cute girl for you. I know, but... <laughs> get one for me, too, Phil. <laughs> I know, but... Well, look, Mr. Sandwich, we might as well get this straightened out right now. I am not going to make a picture with Fred Allen. You can't team a horse with a jackass. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Just say that again. Oh, yeah? (laughs) Is that so? You got your encore. Hang up. (laughs) Well, we'll talk this over later, Mr. Sandridge. Goodbye. Well, that's that. Now, there's just one more thing to settle. Say, Don, where did Andy say he saw Fred Allen? Going into the Brown Derby. Oh, the Brown Derby, eh? Well, as soon as we're through, I'm going to stroll over there and give that wise guy a good talking to. Say, Phil. What? Come along with me and bring your boys. I'll treat them to a sandwich. (laughs) You come too, Mary. Here are two things, ladies and gentlemen, that go together just as naturally as a knife and fork. Fresh ripe strawberries and rich, delicious jello. Yes, sir, and you'll find they blend especially well in the newest jello creation called Jello Strawberry Tarts. This novel dessert is cram full of delightful goodness, and you can make it in practically no time at all. All you have to do is first take a package of Jell-O using any flavor you prefer and make it up as you usually do. Next, pour it over sweetened fresh strawberries and chill until slightly thickened. Then turn into cold baked tart shells and chill until firm. And there, friends, is something mighty swell, a first-rate treat that looks grand and tastes even grander. So tomorrow, serve the family this new and distinctive dessert, Jell-O Strawberry Tarts, a gay, tempting combination of plump, juicy, ripe fresh strawberries and rich, thrilling flavor of Jell-O. This is the last number of the 36th program in the current Jell-O series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I have a very important announcement to make. The destruction in Europe has stricken millions of innocent civilians. In this, their hour of need. The American Red Cross is rushing help at once in your name. Won't you give just as much as you can to the Red Cross Relief Fund? Give immediately through your local Red Cross chapter. Thank you, Don. Good night, folks. J-E-L-L-O. This is the National Broadcasting Company.